we have dramatically overstated the, the value of a manager, <laughs> apparently, as much as you and I talked about Craig Council and Bob Melvin coming into the season. What the fuck? I mean, would the, t- would the Cubs be better off with David Ross? Yes. <laughs> I a honestly legitimate, believe. That is a legitimate conversation that's being had everywhere. Uh, I don't really need to get into that. At this point. No. Uh, but that, that that that's a fun conversation I think we'll have in the off season. But I also want to hear what David Ross is doing. I, I wonder what what he's how pissed off he is or how much fun he's having watching this season from his palatial estate in Florida or wherever he's at. Um, can I'd love to hear an interview with him at some point. So actually, you and I should get on that. Let's try and find his cell phone, call him up. But <laughs> we should. I mean, we were we were talking about, or at least I was talking about. It could be a five game bump for Craig Council, um, taking over the team, but that is certainly not come to fruition. the The Cubs are essentially the Tigers at twice the price. They have <laughs> that's true. They have a, a half game worse record at this point, uh, but they've got this. They've got the same characteristics. Great starting pitching with Shota Imanaga and Justin Steele. Actually, even uh, Jameson Tyone has, has rebounded from a shitty yeah, first season. Yeah, he, he sure has. Uh, Kyle Hendricks was bad for a while and has come back and has been tremendous. They sent demoted him to the bullpen at one point and he came back and has been great as a starter down uh, these last couple of weeks. So the starting pitching is certainly not the issue. Same as same as it is with the Tigers. They don't have a closer. They have blown 18 saves, 18 saves. If they had even converted half of those, they'd have a a winning record at least, which would put them right around where I predicted they would be. I think they were just above a 500 team before the season started. I didn't think they were, again, I didn't think they were going to be a 90 plus win team. I thought they'd be middle of the middle of the eighties and that would put them in contention for the NL central crown. The problem is similar to the AL Central. Two teams have been way better than I am possibly anticipated. The Brewers are—it's almost like they jettisoned the weight of Craig Council and are much exactly. better now without him. <laughs> exactly, you guys got I, screwed I, on that. They also jettisoned the weight of the two top two thirds of their rotation, which makes no sense. So I, I think again, I think they're a house of cards as well. I, I don't, I, I need to probably do more research into that, figure out how, how the fuck they were doing this. But the bigger house of cards is the cards themselves. St. Louis Cardinals, uh, how They're they so are. Annoying. They're so annoying. Like again, you look at their rotation. It, it is, it is, I mean, ancient. They should not be, not Lance be in this fucking race Lynn Looks like Lance exactly. fucking Lynn again. Well, how yeah. did that happen? Uh, the fucking Cardinal voodoo magic is just so nauseating. I'm I'm so sick of it. It was so nice to see it kind of evaporate over the last five plus years, but to have it coming back now is just disgusting. So it's so similar. The the stories, the, the way I feel about the Tigers and the watching this season play out is so, so similar to how the Cubs season is playing out as well. Just on a totally different scale as the Cubs spent $228 million on this payroll or the Tigers Spent 107, which I think 107 is probably the 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 value you get uh, for or the being just below 500 is pretty good value for spending 107 million versus 228 pushing up against the bullshit de facto salary cap. Yeah. Um, Shota Imanaga has been he's far exceeded my expectations. I was a little bit dubious hearing about him. You you know. I thought it'd be a huge adjustment coming to a new culture, a new league. He was fantastic out of the box. He he had a couple blips uh, maybe a month or so ago, but he recovered from that and, sh- and showing his, his dominance again. I was worried about the fly ball rate. Uh, that has not come to crush him yet. That might still come to fruition here as the hot months are here at Wrigley Field as we end July going into August. So that I'm still a little bit nervous about that, but. Justin Steele came back from his game game one hamstring injury and has been the best pitcher in the National League since that. Uh, when he came back over these last nine starts, his stats are better than anyone's. Uh, so he he is back. Like we were talking about Kyle Hendricks. Uh, 
He's looked really good the last couple starts. I was I was sure his career was over. If we were doing podcasts the last three months, I'm sure I would have done a segment where I would have called it called it a career for Kyle Hendricks. I would have thanked him for his his time, the the huge moments he had in Cubs history. But I I thought it was over, and he he has come back, and I'm I'm kind of astounded. Um, so yeah, those are some those are some positives, but the offense has just been so frustrating and Dansby Swanson is kind of at the center of that the underperformance yep. from him Cody Bellinger was okay but now he's hurt Michael Bush my National League Rookie of the Year prediction is actually looking uh, pretty good he will not win National League Rookie of, the, Rookie of the Year due to the emergence of Paul Skeens of course Holy from Pittsburgh shit. Pirates. Yeah. Uh, he might win the Cy Young Rookie of the Year and MVP uh, that dude is fucking ridiculous started the all-star game nationally so my prediction of michael bush winning the national league rookie of the year is not going to happen but hey he is he might be the cubs best hitter right now